Dude, look, let me just get this out the way. Bungie may not get everything right, but who is the trailer team? I just gotta know. Who's the Vidoc team? Who's the trailer team? Who's the teaser team? They make some banger trailers. Now look, we're gonna go through this thing, talk about what we see, but I just wanna go ahead and mention this right now. Spoilers. I know there are some people out there that wanna go into all of this completely blind. Bro, you shouldn't even be watching this video right now. Better yet, you shouldn't even be watching trailers if you're trying to go in that blind. I also wanna mention that this is it. This is Destiny 2 Beyond Light. We're probably gonna get no other teaser from now until launch. Like I expected a launch trailer after the Vidoc, but I was expecting it next week. So this is kind of crazy. There's gonna be almost a week and a half gap here with nothing being sprinkled in between. Or is it? Huh? Again, spoilers. Look, it's currently being speculated that next week, November 5th, I think that's the date. I don't know why November 5th, but it's being speculated November 5th something's gonna shift inside of destiny 2 something to do with the quest some other things happening i don't know we saw a live event though this past year it was epic it was amazing we actually streamed it live on youtube we will do the same for this next live event but it does make sense now considering that bungie just went over the vidoc and they just dropped the launch trailer next week is wide open for a live event to happen in the game something in which the world will shift in some way or another and again the speculated date on that one will be november 5th now let's talk about this trailer okay so first up again spoilers a lot of things are happening in this trailer man zavala of course man zavala is straight up and down to compliment not all of us can be straight up and down right which is why many of us sided with drifter and others they like to dabble a little bit and that's exactly what's happening here i love this scene where varix is holding that box and you can tell that all the fallen well they look like they're about to kill him like we don't know if varix made it through this cutscene. but this is aramis pretty much giving varix a stare down and we know from the other trailers that she does end up freezing at least part of them with the stasis power and it was varix who actually sent out the distress call which is what alerted the stranger eris morn and drifter by the way this cutscene where they're all three fighting these fallen is amazing look at this i love that in the midst of battle the drifter's just like casually just moving around he's like oh this stuff's kind of cool man this darkness stuff ain't that bad now we've seen this scene before already aramis just talking to the fallen giving them the pep speech letting them know why they're about to inject them all with some nasty stasis crystal to make them super powerful and i think what we're gonna see in this scene is essentially her making all her lieutenants which we're gonna see more of later in this trailer. I love this right here, this layout. This seems like a cross layout between like the Prophecy Dungeon, the Dreaming City, but extremely cold. Actually, it looks like something straight out of Mortal Shell with these gates. Now this opening scene or clip actually looks like maybe the beginning of a raid. You can see one, two, three, four, five. I don't think I see the sixth member, but definitely looks like six fire team members. And this is where they actually show off some of the exotics as well as some of the planetary weapons, the location specific weapons that is. And then we see the lieutenants. These are the guys that are gonna be blessed by stasis that Aramis chose herself, or at least a couple of them. There's supposed to be four. And look at this hobgoblin. They're really proud about this. They took a minotaur and merged it with the hobgoblin, which I'm okay with, but this hobgoblin's got legs for days. Like she's about to go dancing. It's kind of sexy. Now this is when things get interesting. I want to pause right here and I want to go ahead and say right now, spoilers. Like really, please don't get mad at me. If you don't want to know who the raid boss is, click away now. I will say this is completely speculation, but I think it makes sense. We were talking about it yesterday in the stream. Everybody was going, yo, who's the raid boss going to be? Is it going to be Aramis? Nah, probably not. Normally, the story-related boss is not the raid boss, right? Think Aldrin and Riven. Now, granted, I know like Oryx and Oryx was able to do that, but you know what I mean. Like Oryx 1 and 2, I get it, but that's different. Oryx is a different animal. Now, the question is, is who is going to be the raid boss in the Beyond Light. And we're speculating it's going to be Clovis Bray. Now, Clovis is the guy who actually started all the Bray tech that you see around the solar system, most notably in places like Mars. He constructed the Dust Palace. Y'all remember that map Blind Watch from Destiny 1? That was actually part of Clovis's facility and one of my favorite maps. It was a fun map. Skyline is also located near one of the Clovis Bray facilities. Now, it's dandy and all, but let's just go through just a little bit, okay? I just want to give you an idea of some stuff here of what Clovis Bray was responsible for. Essentially, they produce a number of cutting-edge scientific and technological breakthroughs 
throughout the golden age, including transmissions and SIVA. Oh man, I hope I'm not getting this stuff wrong. Wild transmission was intended to enhance the strength, speed, and intelligence of prospective colonists using nanomachines. SIVA used nanomachines to break down matter and reconstitute it in order to rapidly construct entire cities. With the transmissions project eventually being shuttered after it caused unforeseen side effects and test subjects, Clovis Bray focused entirely on SIVA, which was subsequently completed and approved for deployment. During SIVA's development, Dr. Zareen Shirazi's confidence in SIVA's capabilities led her to neglect adding safety measures such as a kill switch. Really? Didn't add a kill switch? Come on, man! Following an incident where a test subject was made mute by the effects of SIVA, however, Zarin resolved to propose a failsafe for future nanotech development. Upon SIVA's completion, the first SIVA replication chamber, Site 6, was built within the Cosmodrome in order to outfit the colony ships. By the time of the City Age, the work and surviving records of Clovis Bray had attained a near mythical reputation, with some going so far as to assert that the corporation single-handedly sustained the golden age and was an epitome of innovation. During the OWL sector's investigation of the transmission incidents, however, previously suppressed Clovis Bray records were uncovered, revealing the conglomerate to be more reckless in the pursuits of new advances than previously assumed. The corporation also helped fund a colony and create laboratories and factories on the frozen moon of Europa during the Golden Age. After the collapse, the fallen House of Salvation started looting the ruins of Clovis Bray Colony and laboratories. So that's where all of this is coming from. And I can imagine that both the Stasis abilities and whatever we run into, it's directly responsible from Clovis. Now Clovis ain't no saint. Yeah, I, I got to hear all the, the horror stories. This dude, yes, might have sustained the golden age, but at a price. As in, he liked live subjects and he tested everything. I mean, you're on the other side of the galaxy. You do whatever you want, I guess. But the reason why I think Clovis might be the actual raid boss, maybe an exo version of himself, is we are getting the Cosmodrome back, which is directly linked to Clovis and his facilities. And we're also getting Europa. It just makes too much sense. And this is obviously an eyeball, right? This thing we've been zoomed in on. Now, I don't know the cause of death for Clovis, but stated under Clovis Bray II, his biography, this is the son of Clovis Bray I, like his father before him, Clovis II suffered from a neurodegenerative disorder known as the Clovis Curse, which Clovis had inadvertently inflicted on himself as well as all his descendants through meddling with their genetic sequences. This is the kind of scientific work Clovis would do. This disease progressed to a stage where Clovis II's only chance of survival was to be uploaded into an exo body. Unfortunately, due to unresolved problems that inevitably led to the degeneration of early generation exomines, Clovis II's mind deteriorated to a point where his strenuous involuntary movements tore his own chassis apart. So essentially his frame. And like his dad, he also passed this curse on to his own children, one of them being Elizabeth Bray. Which by the way, it's highly speculated that Elizabeth Bray is the stranger. So that's why they're exos. And the reason why Anna Bray doesn't have this degeneration disease known as Clovis Curse is because she's adopted. Dude, what are we doing out here? Are we really talking lore? Look, some stuff is kind of spotty. I get it. I'm not the best at this. I do highly recommend Bife in these situations. Just know, I would not doubt that Clovis will be the raid boss and we will uncover some very dark stuff. So guys, that is your trailer breakdown. I know it contains some spoilers. Either way it goes, we're all going to be spoiled in about a week and a half. You know what I mean? We're going to be in the game, baby. I will say this. It's been a long time since a narrative has had me engage like this one. Like it's one thing to have like the bad guys doing stuff, right? Oh, the bad guys. But to have like Clovis Bray, this, this corporation that has been touted as being the best thing for mankind ushered in the golden age right the golden age like what kind of hotty talk is that man but then to find out there's a bunch of bad raunchy stuff happening clovis was so crazy that he even messed up his own genetics passing on a curse for the rest of his children this is a personal story and it's all tied to the exo stranger it almost makes me wonder did bungie intend this was this always part of the narrative or were they just like yo we got to make this exo stranger somehow tied into the story i don't know which way do they work here to me though it's crazy that elizabeth bray elsie is the exo stranger or very likely the exo stranger all around really really cool stuff guys let me know in the comments below what you think are you excited about this one dude i just hope whoever the raid boss is is a bad mammy jammy and i love a narrative to be tied to them 
it makes things so much better. There has been a few raids in the past, I will say, that I just have no idea what the hell's going on. I'm like, all right, we've got some big bad guy in front of us. All I know is he's shooting first. We gotta kill him. And that's like Destiny the game. So it's nice that we got some narrative backing here. So let me know in the comments below, do you like this narrative? Are you excited about this? What is your thoughts on Clovis Bright? Dude sounds nuts, man. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.